Welcome back. In this video, we are going to be covering input and output assignments in further detail, as well as some more mixer behaviors in anatomy, channel strip to mixer behavior, and some recording procedures. Let's start by talking about plugins. In Paramix, there are two types of plugins you can use, VS3 and VST. VS3 is Merging's own format of plugins that can be handled either with native power or with a mass core system. If you use MassCore, they behave like AAX DSP plugins in an HDX system, in that they use their own reserve pool of computing power, but have a fixed latency, which is pretty incredible for live work and overdubbing sessions after you've started to mix. Let's look at how to assign, move, and duplicate plugins in Pyramix. To add a plugin, simply go to the channel you want, and this part should be very familiar to you coming from Pro Tools. Click on an empty slot to assign the plugin. Unlike Pro Tools, you can't choose what slot you are assigning a plugin to initially. As you add more and more plugins, the slots will grow to accommodate your usage. Just like in a PTHD or Ultimate system, there are two sets of menus so you can see if you're assigning a native plugin or one that can use DSP. Something to note here is that in Pyramix, you cannot have a VS3, then a VST, then another VS3, or the other way around. More on that in a moment. If you want to change the order of plugins, you can do it in a basic way by right-clicking the plugin, then selecting Move Up or Move Down from the menu system. Now I know you're probably thinking, but in Pro Tools you can just grab the plugin and move it to another slot. I know, I felt like this at first too, but how many times have you tried to move an EQ after your compressor and accidentally dropped it onto the effect you just spent 10 minutes tweaking, losing your settings forever with no way to undo it? Trust me, this way is much better. You'll also see that you can't move a VST before a VS3 or the other way around. If you want to move plugins around after you've assigned them or copied them to other channels, you'll want to head back over to the Configure tab. Typically, the Effects tab is collapsed, so if we click on it here, we can see our effects routing per channel. Now this is where we can do more Pro Tools-like behaviors to the plugins. We can click a plugin and drag it to another channel. We can control click and drag a plugin to duplicate it to another channel or we can reorder them. We can also select a range of channels and duplicate a selected plugin to all channels or a selected set of channels. You'll find all of the options here. Now that we're in the inner workings of the mixer, we can see why you can't drag VS3 and VST plugins above one another. But if you'll notice here at the bottom of the effects group, there's a flip order button at the bottom of each channel. Here is where we can decide whether we want our VS3 or VST plugins to come first in our signal path per channel. In Pyramix, external hardware is connected to the software mixer with a VS3 plugin called External Insert. To use this, simply click on the plugin area of the mixer and navigate from VS3, Add, Other, and External Insert. Now you can assign your hardware to whatever channels are connected on your converters. Note that unlike in Pro Tools, you can choose different return paths than send paths, which could be very useful depending on your configuration. Back on the mix view of the mixer, we can talk about what I alluded to in the last video. In Pyramix, channels in the Edit window are not linked to the mixer in the same way as they are in Pro Tools. In Pro Tools, you make an audio channel and it makes an accompanying strip that's linked to it forever. That's not the case here. When you right-click on the track header in the Project window, you can make a new audio track, or you can make new tracks and strips. When you make a track and strip together in this dialog, they will be pre-linked. But if you want to reorganize the session, there are a few additional steps you'll need to know about. In the upper left-hand corner of each track header in the project view, there is a block that shows the number of the track. Here is where you can assign which strip it will be connected to. To move the order of the track in this window, you will have to click down here in the Tools tab and select the Tracks panel. Then, by clicking the track you want on its left edge, you can drag its reorder. Note that stereo tracks here must be moved together to avoid visual inconsistencies. Also, extremely important to avoid confusion, the mixer and project windows are not linked. So moving the channel order in one window does not move the channel order in the other. There is an option in the tracks menu to synchronize tracks and strips, but note that this only applies to the names of the tracks. Where a track is in the mixer window has nothing to do with where it is in the project window. Because of this, you can organize your session visually however it's best for your workflow. To move the channel in the mixer, you'll have to again click the Configure button, and then you can reorder your strips however you like by clicking and dragging them. Alternately, if you'd like to move the channels around in the mixer view, you can do that as well. By holding Ctrl, Shift, and Alt, you can click and drag selected channels. Or, you can right-click on the strip, navigate to Strip, Copy Selected Strips, 
then choose where you'd like them to go, right click and paste them before or after the new target. Back over to the track headers. You can use this area to control all sorts of behaviors about the channel. It's input from its hardware, it's routing, it's solo state, automation display, and more. Note that if you solo a track here, it's unlinked from the solo in the mixer, so it'll stop playing audio to all other mixer inputs. To really comprehend the way the Pyramix mixer works, you'll need to think about the project window like a tape machine and the mixer like a separate piece of hardware. Now, say we have two tracks and we'd like to make their output to the mixer to be stereo. You can click on this box here and assign the mixer strip you'd like to patch and choose left. Then you can choose the next track and choose the same mixer channel and then choose the right strip. Notice here it will convert your track to a stereo track. This is also true for surround configurations. Once we've configured our routing to taste, we're ready to record. There's just a few more things you should know before you should be comfortable enough to go off exploring and using Pyramix on a daily basis for work. Pyramix records audio a little differently than Pro Tools. After each take, you can decide whether or not you want to keep the audio, mark the take as bad, or delete the take. If you don't want this functionality, you can go into the settings menu and change the record mode to dubbing. This will automatically keep all recorded material. Otherwise, you can use the standard mode to have a more efficient usage of disk space as you won't be piling on gigs and gigs of unwanted audio. While we're here, Pro Tools users are likely more accustomed to a certain media architecture for recorded material. To set this up, you can change the take name to 001 and it'll increment up from there. Also select Prefix with Track Name. Puremix will then prompt you to enable the one file per track option, since if you're recording in PMF format, the default behavior is to generate a poly file. Choose whether or not you want to see the waveform while you're recording, then apply the changes and close the dialog. To begin recording, you can press the period key on the numeric keypad, and to stop it, you can press the space bar. You can also punch in and out just like in Pro Tools, but the key commands are a little different. Begin playback with the space bar, Punch in manually when you'd like with the period key, and punch out with the enter key on the numeric keypad. Note that you can punch in and out with the same key commands without stopping. Just be very careful not to press enter like you would in Pro Tools to add a marker, as that will punch you out and your clients will not be very pleased with you. Pyramix is an incredibly involved and sophisticated software. With the knowledge of the basic workings and structure you've gained in the last few videos, you should be comfortable enough in Pyramix to get your hands dirty. While this concludes the Pro Tools to Pyramix series, there will be many more tutorial videos to help you learn advanced techniques in Pyramix, and I look forward to seeing you back for more.